Hi there, I hope I found you well. I'm Jenny Kirk, welcoming you back to the channel up here in the loft on Weir Yard. And today we've got a review of a new product that's come out from DCC Concepts. And this is their own take on the Stay Alive Power Packs, designed to fit to the Zen Black and the Zen Blue Plus decoders. And these actually feature a very innovative just plug a system of connecting them up. So there is no soldering whatsoever involved with these. And they come with a variety of different sizes of uh, power capacitors in this. So hopefully I'm really looking forward to trying these out across a variety of motive power and see just how easy they are to fit and how well they go into a variety of locomotives and also see how that improves the performance. So without further ado, and in association with the channel sponsor, Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories, let's take a look at this new product. I'm really, really thankful today for DCC Concepts who've sent over a pack of their all new two and three wire Stay Alive assortment packs. And these are a completely new product. They've just brought these out. And you may remember when we did the full review on the Zen Black decoders that they had this fly lead with a plug on the end. And we mentioned at the time that they were for a forthcoming set of Stay Alives. Now these have finally arrived and uh, really, really grateful to be able to give these the full look over and review treatment. And I'm gonna be doing a full fitting guide with these and kind of you're gonna be exploring with me just how easy it is to fit these into locomotives and how well they perform. Now they've also sent over a pack of uh, these wiring harnesses and the purpose of these are so that you can actually plug these into any other brand of decoder that supports the three wire uh, smart power pack stay alive charging system which on some decoders is controlled uh, you have to set it up through CVs but actually I'm told on the Zen decoders, it's just plug and go. Um, they just work without needing any setting up, although you can fine tune them in the CVs should you so wish. So hopefully that's gonna make these really, really easy. And of course, with those plugs, we don't need to do any soldering. So the only soldering you'll ever need is if you're plugging these to something like a, a lens, a trainomatic, uh, that kind of brand of decoders that supports the three wire power pack system. And there are actually quite a lot of decoders that do, so you can mix and match between these. And also likewise, you can cut the plug off the Zen Black decoders and actually hardwire them into other brands of Stay Alive's too. So a really, really flexible industry standard type interface, but of course the innovation is those plugs. Now, uh, DCC Concepts also very kindly sent over a Zen Black decoder. So that'd be really useful, but I already have a load of these from when I did the full review. So what I'm gonna be looking at doing is fitting these to a variety of different locomotives. And um, we'll come to that in a bit, but first up, let's have a look at what we've got in the box. Now, the elephant in the room, um, I've actually already test fitted uh, one of these into a locomotive just to get to grips with them, see how easy it is. Uh, but it comes in the standard DCC Concepts type packaging. And there's a little bit of info on the back here, just about um, you know, little bits and pieces uh, to do with fitting these. But actually, out of the box, um, I didn't really need to refer to that. So what do you get in the box? Uh, you get four of the power controller boards, and that's these with the Zen written on, and you'll see there's like a little tiny plug on both ends and uh, the whole purpose of these is these are the power management boards. You may be looking at that and thinking well which end plugs to which uh, but what you can see there, I'm just trying to hold that up, one end is a two pin connector and the other end is a three pin connector so you can't really get these the wrong way around. 
Now the actual stay alive themselves, I just picked one out here, that's the two wire connector and then what you'll be needing back to the decoder, the Zen Black decoders have that natively, is the three pin plug and effectively what you're doing is you're daisy chaining decoder to the power management board to the stay alive and because these are separate it does mean that you've got a little bit more flexibility on how to fit these into the model. Now it comes in this multi-pack with four of the power management boards. I've already fitted one to a locomotive and you get four of the stay alives and these are all different sizes. So that's the biggest and that really is quite a beefy uh, stay alive now. So we've got one, two, three, six of these super high energy electrolytic capacitors in there. And believe me, I'm just flabbergasted at how much energy these are storing. Um, you know, I, I'm not the youngest of people. Uh, I did do A-level physics and you know, we studied capacitors. And I remember capacitors back in the day of this size, you'd be looking at microfarads, but these are actually being measured in farads. It's just phenomenal. I'm staggered how much power these are storing in such a small space. And that's the key to how to get these to really get the best out of a locomotive. Um, because what they're effectively doing is they're supplying a continuous power supply to the decoder, even if it loses contact with the track. So for example, going over insel frog points, dirty track, or even if you've got twists in your track, so occasionally you'll get wheels, just lift a little bit, lose contact. If you don't have the stay alive, then uh, what's likely to happen, although of course the brownout protection on the Zen Black and the Zen Blue Plus decoders will go some way to alleviate that, you really, there's no real substitute to having a stay alive for super silky smooth performance, and particularly on small shunting locomotives. So uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what we can do with these. Now, as I alluded to, that's the biggest of the Stay Alive packs. The next one down, I've actually fitted into a locomotive, so I'll show you that in a bit. We then have the next one down is this two capacitor model, quite small, so a lot easier to fit this into some of the smaller locomotives. And then, of course, the smallest here is the single capacitor. But don't be... Um, get into the mindset of thinking that just because it's a single capacitor that's not really going to be very useful. These are really powerful capacitors so even that with a single capacitor is going to give a great deal of oomph to a lot of locomotives. So I'm going to just get all of these out of the packaging now, put that packaging to one side and uh, we're not going to need the wiring harness for this so i'm going to put that to one side but do bear it in mind if you've got for example in your fleet if you've gone in in a big way for lens or tcs or even trainomatic decoders as well then these power packs can be used with those if you get the harnesses so that's that's really quite important for not having to have a huge outlay in replacing all of your decoders I really think that the uh, Stay Alives really benefit smaller shunting locomotives the best. They're more likely to uh, get intermittent power problems over insel frog points, uh, dirty track, because they've just got less wheels to uh, get that electrical continuity. So I first up, I've picked one of the really great Oxford Rail Janus shunters. And one of the reasons for going for this is it is a short six coupled wheelbase, but there is a reasonable amount of space inside here. And actually the chassis of these, these are the sleeper hit. It's such a silky smooth, uh, well-engineered chassis that I think a lot of kit built locomotives, 3D printed body shells, we've reviewed a few of those. They're all uh, really, really crying out for a small, reliable chassis such as the one that's under this. So this is one of those locomotives that I think is gonna be universally useful. And it's a great idea if we can get a stay alive to fit into that. Now, sticking with the theme of small shunting locomotives, I've also got here one of the Hellion Class 7 shunters. And I think that these are gonna be actually really useful for uh, fitting with the stay alive because they actually feature a pull-off 
cab. And if, like this one, it's already fitted with a Zen Blue Plus decoder, there's the little wiring loom there from the decoder. So we just leave that be, and I'm going to be looking to try and fit the Stay Alive into the cab area, which I think is, is something that will work really, really well and simply. And I think that's going to be the watchword of these DCC Concepts Stay Alive power packs, is that um, it's all about the ease of fitting. I know a lot of people don't like the soldering, and this pretty much does away with that. It also does away with any of the CV setting. If you just want them to run with the default settings out of the box, you do not have to delve around into understanding the CV settings for these. Now, I'm also going to investigate what I can fit into one of these. This is its actually a day pole, but still made by Hornby XL and Y Pug. Now, this one I've picked because it's already got a Zen Black decoder in there. And I'm going to see just how easy it might be to add a Stay Alive into this model and indeed see what kind of a performance boost that gives us. And uh, the final one from the locomotives I've picked out is I'm curious just how well the really big Stay Alive will work. And so for that end, I've chosen a much bigger locomotive. Arguably, these don't need the power packs quite so much. But this has a recess designed to take a speaker. Uh, it's not sound fitted, but I'm going to be able to use that recess to put the largest of these Stay Alives in. And we're really going to see how well that improves, particularly the slow speed running on this model. First up, I'm going to choose this uh, Janus or Janus Shunter. And this is actually the elephant in the room. This has already been fitted with one of these Stay Alive systems. And I actually managed to fit in the second largest uh, Stay Alive into this model. I was actually quite impressed just how well it fitted in. So I'm just going to have a, a little rummage around and find my trusty jeweler's screwdriver. And I'm going to take this apart just to show you the fitting in here. Now, as you remember from the review of this model, um, it's quite easy to get into, just four screws, and then we just get inside it. And here we are, we've got uh, the full fitting. Now, I had to work a little bit on this to make sure it fitted in, but the Oxford Rail Janus Shunter does have a lot of space. You can see here, I used the Micro 8-pin Zen Black decoder. The decoder is there. We've got the power management board has been fitted very carefully over here, uh, making full use of the space. And the Stay Alive power pack with the four capacitors is fitting into this space at the front there. And that all goes together quite nicely and does still fit underneath the bonnet quite readily. So we can just carefully put this back together and just slide this in. We'll do up all those screws and then I'll show you just kind of what kind of an effect this has. So you can see it starts up just fine. It's been sat there for quite some time. I believe from having uh, actually read through some of the manuals, they can take up to a minute or so to fully charge. So I've just had them sat on the layout energized whilst I've been setting up. So that's running just fine. And of course, the best visual check of uh, the Stay Alives is just to pick them up. There's a bit of a tight spot on there. I need to just uh, sort that out. But it does keep running. And I put it back on the rolling road. And away she goes. Uh, that will probably take up to a minute now to fully charge. So if I lift it up, it doesn't run for as long because it's not fully charged. But certainly that's improving the performance, and that is the four capacitor Stay Alive unit, so the second biggest. The next locomotive I want to take a look at fitting is the Hellion 07. Again, small shunting locomotive really would benefit from a Stay Alive to really just help it through point work and make it much more controllable at slower speeds. As is the case with all of these Hellion 07s, the cab just very carefully just wriggle it, pull it free, 
And I've already got fitted the Zen Blue Plus decoder. That's in there. The wires are fed through into the cab. So we've already got that plug. And just like last time, there's no soldering whatsoever involved. So I'm sure I can hear a lot of people breathing a sigh of relief. Now for this one, um, I've had a play around. I can't quite fit the biggest Stay Alive in there. It's most infuriating. It's just a little bit too big no matter which way you try and squeeze it in so i haven't been able to use that one if i had another of the next size down that would have been perfect in here but as it is i'm gonna to have to turn to the next size below that which is just the two capacitors but this is really going to improve the running of this locomotive anyway so what I want here, pick one of the power management boards. Now you'll see there's two pins in there, and this is for the stay alive part of the assembly. And make sure you orientate this correctly. There's a little groove inside the plug. Let me just try and show you just there. And the plug itself has lugs, a little bit difficult to photograph in the white. And they're biased towards the tops. So just do make sure you get that the right way around. It is an easy plug fit. If it's not going in, it's probably because it's the wrong way around. So don't try and force it. So we've got that side of the board all done and dusted. So all that's left now is to plug this into the decoder end of all of this. And again, we've got that lug and groove to make sure that we get the plug the right way up. That's very important. So you can see there, uh, the actual grooves are biased to the bottom, so just turn that over and you'll find there solder free just plugs straight in and you'll feel it sort of click in place. It doesn't need a lot of force. What I now need to do with this is make sure it all fits into the cab. Now, if you're worried about the wiring showing anything like that, what I would suggest is consider a little bit of black paint on the wires and on the plugs because that white can look a bit garish through the windows. Um, but I'm gonna just test fit this, make sure it all fits first before we get into anything like that. Let's just see about, I think we can probably wind the wire around. That just stops it from uh, doing its own thing in there. And just very carefully feed all of this in. The power management board does actually fit lengthways across quite nicely. So that's gone down and into there. And I've just filed out a little bit of a, a uh, groove there just to take the wire. I'm not sure how necessary that is, but I felt rather than mess about, I would uh, prepare this when the decoder was put in. Let's just feed some of this extra wire in there out of the way. Line up the cab. Just make sure we're not getting any of the wire falling out of place. And you'll just feel the cab push into place and we've got that stay alive in there. Now you just see the actual capacitors there. So with a little bit of poking around, I can probably get those capacitors in there to sit a bit lower, but this is really just to prove that it all works. So again, we don't need to change any of the CVs. There's no soldering gone on there. You can see in real time just how quickly it uh, came together. So there's another locomotive there ready to be tested on the layout. Slow speed performance on the Hellion 07 is pretty nice. This is using the second smallest of the capacitors. It would fit the next size up, but you only get one in the pack. So it's one of the things that I've identified that actually in terms of actual um, size to space ratio, the second largest is actually the most useful, in my opinion. There's more locomotives that have space for that. The larger one does tend to be a much trickier fit because finding the space can be quite hard. So uh, one of the things that I have suggested to DCC Concepts is it might be nice to consider a bulk pack of that second largest uh, capacitor.
So we've proved the concept with that Hellion and I think we can go in and change the CV settings if we want to change things like the charging time. But natively, it supports a charging rate that won't overwhelm your uh, controller if you've got a few of these on your layout. The next locomotive I'm going to move on to is this um, Daypol later on Hornby XL and Y Pug. The design doesn't change from Daypol to Hornby, so the model that you get today, which um, I do have one up here, so the model that you get, the newest model from Hornby, is identical to even the oldest models from Daypol, so it doesn't really matter which one you've got. Now with this, space is very much at a premium. Now I hardwired the decoder in here. We've got the Zen Black 8-pin decoder. That's all wired in and we've got our plug here. So it's going to be necessary to just go for the smallest here. I think let's not mess about. Let's not try and be too greedy. Click that in place. Now what I'm going to do now is try and just tidy some of this wire out of the way and possibly just wrap use the wire to hold it together maybe and of course it's always very important especially with a hard wire like this when you're really really starved of space to test it on the programming track before it goes anywhere near the layout in case you induce a short. Very important. Because let's not hide from the fact model railway stuff is expensive. So we don't want to unnecessarily blow any of these components. And this is probably the least amount of space of any locomotive that you're going to come across. So the decoder fits in there just nice. And of course we can disguise stuff quite readily with uh, black paint once we're done. And that's the route I will be taking. Right, so the control board and the decoder are in. Now we're just going to free up the space, plenty of space at the top here. Very carefully push this in, maybe lift the cab slightly just to get it through the door. I would personally use like black card as well just to make it look like maybe there's um, like a canvas cover going in on the side. That is a really really tough fit it has to be said. So this will need some further work just to disguise everything in there but first up I think we've largely got it in we can test this and see what the performance is like. So there we are, the smallest possible space, and it does pass the test on that. It is a very restricted space, and if you remember from our videos, we have done a Stay Alive fitting guide to these in the past. And um, my thoughts on this, and being brutally honest, is that because of the nature of the decoder plus that power management board, uh, we've only really got the space to put in the smallest capacitor. And my concern is that you don't get a lot of runtime on this when you lift it off the track. Now that should be reasonably charged now. So I'm gonna lift her up. And you can see that the actual run on time of the smaller stay alive capacitor really doesn't give it quite as much um, extra as some of the other installs that we've had. It will certainly get this locomotive across minor undulations in track, dirty track and insulfrog points. 
but it isn't going to have quite the performance that I've seen from other systems. And I just felt that there isn't really enough room in the cab to put some of the bigger stay alives that would really, really benefit this type of locomotive. Now, don't take that as a detraction. Um, it's simply an observation based on what I've got these to do. And it does still fulfill the brief. So again, should be fully charged. I'm gonna lift it up and we don't get a lot of run on time. We get enough that this is still a perfectly usable stay alive system. Now, the next one that I want to do this, we're not going to be uh, pushed on space. So I'm going to open up this Backman 21 pin decoder fitted uh, locomotive. And this should give us more than enough space for the largest of the stay alive. So I've already got the uh, 21 pin Zen decoder that DCC Concepts kindly sent over, fitted into this locomotive. There's our solderless fly lead for the stay alives. And as you can see there, the Backman 21 pin chassis gives you this cutout. It's intended for a speaker if you go down the sound fitted route, but that is the perfect size to put in the stay alive decoder and not have to worry at all about a lack of space. So again, we've got our power management board and we're gonna find the correct connector for the uh, this power pack. I'm just gonna plug that in. Again, the other end very, very easily plugs in. Let's make sure I get it the right way around. So just gonna plug that in. It's as simple as that no soldering and uh, I know I'm not the biggest fan of soldering I'm not very good at it I know a lot of people are probably even less uh, keen on soldering than even I am now this locomotive chassis block is going to be a good heat sink for any heat generated in all of this I'm just going to wrap the surplus wire in fact it's just before I stick it underneath there I'm going to wrap some of the surplus wire around because I don't want it to become uh, in any way jammed where the body screws go on this model. So I'm just going to very carefully just fit that in underneath there. The power management board I got that in over the top. Just want to just try and get that into there. I'm going to put a twist on these wires just to keep them where I want them. And it's just simply a case of refitting the body, programming the correct uh, locomotive ID into the decoder. Again, we don't need to mess about with CV settings for that stay alive unless you really want to fine tune its performance. And so you can see that the slow speed control on this is really, really good. So that's on the lowest setting that this is set for. So this is on effectively one out of 128 and uh, it's going just fine on what is actually a little bit dirty track because this doesn't really get used a lot there. It's going to change its direction. There's no flicker whatsoever in the lights. And this locomotive should be fully charged. So I'm going to put a little bit of speed onto it. And I'm going to reach over. And you can see those wheels just keep turning. Now this is very much a beast of a stay alive. You can see there. And we've still got... Uh, there. Uh, that is actually an incredibly impressive stay alive system. I'm just going to get it back on the track. That will now take a little bit of time to charge back up, but that is very impressive. And now it's transformed this Backman 25 to being effectively an unstoppable shunting locomotive. And it'll be a welcome addition to my exhibition layout that I use uh, doing shunting, Grove Street Yard it's called. 
And with a locomotive like this on there, really, it's going to be a pleasure to operate at exhibitions because really I don't think anything is going to phase this locomotive with that huge Stay Alive in. The only problem I have with the larger Stay Alives is that they are so difficult to find the space for. I really, really tried to get that fitted into the Class 7 from Hellion and I just couldn't quite get it to fit in the cab there. And so we've actually gone for the third largest uh, Stay Alive uh, fitted into this because I'd already used the second largest in the Janus Shunter and it's actually worked quite well in terms of run on time. In fact, I didn't show you that and let's see if I can just show you what kind of a run on time we can get out of this. So it should be fully charged now. I'm going to lift that up and we're still getting a pretty reasonable run on time from the uh, two capacitor stay alive and um, if you can fit the two capacitor stay alive into a model that does seem more than adequate to power even locomotives as large and as heavy as this although that single capacitor stay alive it does get the locomotive through any slight dirty spots in sulfrog points but it doesn't give you much more than that. And as you can see on this, there's quite a lot of wires in there, which I'm gonna to have to try and hide, maybe with some black card to look like the uh, crew have put up some canvas sides just to protect them from the elements. All in all, can I recommend these products? Certainly I can. Really, really nice selection of Stay Alive's very often one of the biggest issues is finding the space and with having a variety of different sized stay alive capacitors it does mean that there is a lot of flexibility to fit into these locomotives that other fixed setup stay alive systems struggle to fit indeed in the past i've tried to fit both the yanus and the hellion 07 and I have struggled to get the power packs into both of those because of the nature of the size. Now you can remove the capacitors from other brands of Stay Alive's and power packs and therefore put them onto fly leads just to give you that little bit of extra flexibility. But that then comes back to the biggest party trick of the DCC concept system is that these you just plug them in and it can't be stressed enough that for a lot of people this is the unique selling point that you don't have to do any kind of soldering at all and you saw in the installs just how quick and easy it was to plug these together and fit them in these locomotives. There's a whole variety of different stay alives in this multi-pack from the smallest through to the biggest, which gives you the greatest opportunity to test over your locomotive fleet and decide which sizes you then need to subsequently purchase to fit the rest of your fleet. The multi-pack is a really great way of finding what works best for you. And the best selling points being the lack of any need to solder and of course the native CV LUS settings whereby you just plug and go. Although CV settings can be adapted later on should you choose to change some of the performance characteristics on your models. Well I hope you really enjoyed and found informative that review and fitting guide. Don't forget that uh, if you are really interested in the products featured today, you can find them at the affiliate link in the description box down below. And also don't forget to tickle that like button and sharing is caring. It really helps the channel a great deal. If you consider to share us on social media too. And if you haven't already done so, do consider hitting that subscribe button and tickling the bell to be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying thanks for watching. You take great care of yourself. Happy modeling. Bye for now. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to 
Anthony Kidson, Michael Churchwood, Anthony Hunt, William Wade, Wayne Johns, Offshore Allen, oorail.co.uk, Tepic, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Peter Bolton, Brian and Dorothy Mudd, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky 10707, George Butterini, Andy Finch, Chris Moss, Robert Sears, MD of San Juan Model Company and Grant Line Products, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, and Mo Henry. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.